What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks NBA Playoff Edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become apprised whenever great betting content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Betting content that, I don't know, got you the lock of Joel Embiid. Two blocks! Pretty early. He had like one in the first minute. It was beautiful. Uh, got two of those through in the first three quarters. And uh, yeah, now we slide into the next game. Push James Harden. Again, I ended up on James Harden pretty nice at the 10 and a half too. Looks like he's going to fall a little bit short of it. The game's just about to end here. But you know what? These are the sacrifices I made. I hit pause. I come in here. I record NBA. Well, I recorded MLB a little while ago too. But either way, I'm here to give you guys all the great information that I possibly can. We have three games. That's what's really exciting about this. This might be one of the only, like one of the few three gamers that we have left here on this NBA slate where we have a couple of games to be able to decide, pick and choose where we want to go rather than force anything. So looking forward to, well, never force bets. That'd be really silly. Just like, Oh no, never bet without Bet365. If you're in one of these great four states, Virginia, Ohio, New Jersey, Colorado, there it is, found them. Those are the four that you need to sign up at, at Bet365, and why? Well, you get $200 at bet credits when you bet $1 at the link below. You deposit $10, and you bet one, you get $200 in bet credits. That is awesome stuff. Not awesome, Jacob Dupron getting injured earlier. That was... Really tough for me, but you know what? That's MLB. You can check out MLB Lindy's Lean Sykes and Locks. There's 17 games. Yeah, 17 games on Tuesday. That one took a while. So looking forward to everybody checking out that one here after they watch the NBA goodness. And hey, if NBA is your thing too, happy to give you all the information I possibly can there. But three games, lots of really competitive, really fun series. Uh, yeah, I got to get out of here because I got to go watch the uh, the Golden State game. That is for sure Golden State Sacramento. Go Sacramento. Although, you know, something bad will probably happen. That's the spirit, Eric. Let's get to the pick, shall we? Our first game on tap here, we have the Hawks and Boston. Boston up one nothing, Complete domination. No issues whatsoever in that one. You got to see, I mean, massive minutes still for Jason Tatum. The guys you would expect here. You had Robert Williams come off the bench and played fantastic. Al Horford there played 38 minutes himself. Pretty wild stuff. Boston, they're just they're loaded it's going to be really really fun to watch especially we'll see how this Giannis injury ends up working out here in the east changes the complexion entirely here you got uh the Sixers again not going to be watching the end of the game paused it put in the work made sure I could get back in here and then I got to watch the Golden State game and try to get that live as fast as possible but Atlanta for this one I've been starting to dig into some of the first half numbers in a couple of spots and I'm a little bit confused by this one, so it's going to be my lean for the time being, but I want to talk through it at least. We have a 10-point spread in this game, but the first half line is plus 6.5. 10-point spread, plus 6.5. Generally, what happens is you get to the second half and you start playing to what your differential is. You start fouling if you're Atlanta, if you're behind, like we expect them to be, if the game's somewhat competitive there. Lots of ways where the second half you start making adjustments, doing other things, but plus 6.5 here on the first half, that's available currently at FanDuel Sportsbook. So I think that's a pretty interesting play. If it falls to six, five and a half, I can just disregard it and not have to think about it. But I'm really kind of intrigued by plus six and a half plus. If you're a premium odd shopper member, uh, this has been something that's been near the top of the board in a lot of these games of late with double digit spread. So it's something that I want to be paying more attention to. Want to do a little bit more research before I fire it off. But of course, in the premium discord where you can sign up below, use promo code Lindy, get yourself half off your first week and hang out with us uh, nonstop there. It's great stuff. Uh, I love the community. Love everybody who's hanging out there on the daily. Atlanta, Plus six and a half. You just got to be paying attention to that one. All right. Just saying. Something I'm going to be looking into and giving you a report back. Under 230 is actually the like play here from this one. This is the only play that I currently have in this game, which kind of allude to where I'm going to be going here next. Don't worry. We have enough coming up in the other two games here as well. But the under of 230 is kind of where I'm at here. You get a defensively stout Boston game. And I, I get 112.99. You had Trey Young completely shoot the ball terribly. If he's going to go out there and put up only 16 points, go one for five from three. Dude has only made one three in every one of his last four games. He had zero the one before. Zero the one before that. What are we doing right now, Trey Young? He's made four threes out of his past 20, 28, 33 attempts. That's so bad. It's almost 10%. Could you imagine? Could you imagine giving that person a max salary? Pretty wild stuff. 
just throwing it out there. I do think this game continues to be a little bit more lethargic. I think Boston controls the pace. About that pace, no treble. You've got Ma uh, Marcus Smart still doing his thing. Derek White, very confused why he wasn't playing more in the regular season. Well, you saw 38 minutes from him right from the get-go there. And Malcolm Brogdon, 21, they didn't really have to put him into duty at all. He's still going to be very good for this team, too. Boston has so many pieces. And, of course, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Makes sense that they could go out, dominate defensively, dominate offensively. Might be talking myself into maybe something there, but probably not. I think Atlanta plus six and a half. The only thing that's projecting out well, and again, 10, not really all that interested for this game. Oh, and we're going to the lock pick, of which I have none. I do not have a lock pick from this one. Again, I can be a little bit more stringent. I can be a little bit more strict about what I want to do here. And again, this is my program. Not to be egotistical and individual here, but I'm just saying what I'm able to do is I'm able to take care of my people. I do not want to give you shitty plays for the sake of giving you plays. That is not what I'm interested in doing. Here to make you money, not give you crap, like I've been giving you in the MLB streets for the last two weeks. So we're going to try to avoid that at all costs. <sighs> I have no lock play in this one. You know what? Let's talk about the other two games. Far more interesting. Maybe there's some props that show up a little bit later, but right now I'm telling you, nothing projecting out well for me. A lot of upsets that we had here in game ones across the board. And, uh, well, weird to think that the Knicks are probably one of the exceptions where it's it shouldn't be all that surprising to you this Knicks team over on dunks and threes has ascended to the top of the board they are sixth currently in terms of adjusted net rating 47 and 35 on the season and i get it cleveland the rightful four seed 51 and 31 they're incredible they're the second ranked team in the nba as well the east is just stacked and again the path might have just gotten a little bit wider there if Giannis is going to be out for any kind of uh, amount of time here so we'll talk about that one coming up for wednesdays but uh jalen brunson just what a catalyst for this basketball team only had to play 30 minutes pretty strange situation that we ran into there considering i did expect a lot more from him there in that spot we had josh hart play 33 minutes but now he is doubtful to be playing in this basketball game so you're going to be getting a healthy dose of emmanuel quickly Quentin Grimes, who I'm a little surprised that the books jacked up his props as much as they did, as fast as they did. I thought we were going to be getting some value going their direction here. And then on the Cleveland side, you're going to have to just have Donovan Mitchell go out and win you basketball games, but he played about as well as you could have asked. 44 minutes for the team that he spurred in the offseason ended up going to Cleveland. I mean, it was a trade, so what was he going to do? It's just what it is. But he put up 38, 8, and 5. Looked awesome. 6 for 16 from 3. He was the one piece that really showed up on the Cleveland side. And we'll talk about the guy who really needs to show up this time around because uh, the Knicks, they found some interesting ways to slow him down, and I think they're going to think they're going to make some adjustments. But the first guy, right from the get-go, Josh Hart, 33 minutes. Not that he's a high usage guy, but I do think that that's going to immediately start factoring in guys like Quentin Grimes, although his point prop is a little bit efficient to me. RJ Barrett's is the one that looks a little bit low. He had just seven points in that first game, 31 minutes, two for 12 from the field. I hate backing this guy. That's why he falls into this lean category, but... It's just math. It's projecting out what I think the best play is going to be based on the analytics, based on the usage rates. And I don't see a scenario where you don't see higher usage for RJ Barrett. He better make some shots quickly or, you know, you're going to run into more quickly. <laughs> that was fun. Lean RJ Barrett over 16 and a half. No jokes here. Julius Randle coming up next here for our discussion piece in the like section. And this guy has just been everything you could possibly want as the next team. 34 minutes, 7 for 20 from the field, just 19 points, but he had 10 boards, and he played an awesome, awesome defensive game. Had the two steals, but really, really found ways to be uh, still a little bit of a nuisance down low, and him and Mitchell Robinson found ways to slow down that Cleveland front court, which is no small task. Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, definitely two of the best in the biz in that regard, but definitely going to be a difficult defensive matchup for him. But without Josh Hart... And with an opportunity to really redeem 7 for 20, the usage is going to be there. I don't see how 23 and a half is the right number here. I have him closer to 25 and a half, 26. Nothing crazy, but it's definitely a small play on the over 
of 23 and a half points here for Julius Randle. I think you're going to get a little bit of creation station for Jalen Brunson going out there, doing a little bit of everything. He only had two assists and two rebounds. Kind of, kind of found his footing a little bit late in that game. Again, pretty wild that uh, they were able to win that game in such low scoring fashion. I thought the Knicks would need to up the pace, need to find ways to outscore them in a pretty prominent way, whereas Cleveland wants to really play lethargic basketball. Just think about that. 97 points they held them to. 97. Great defensive effort. Jalen Brunson, not known for his defense either, but Julius Randle, known for a lot of things, like, I don't know, being a walking heat check from time to time. Over 23 and a half, too low of a number. But my favorite play from this game is a guy that I think comes out balling right from the get-go here. Is it the best matchup? No. But this is a number that I just find to be broken at 26 and a half PRA. We're talking about Evan Mobley, who played 38 minutes, went four for 13 from the field. And you saw Donovan Mitchell take up a lot of the usage, as you would probably expect him to. Darius Garland started to, you know, be another offensive catalyst there, even though it was a little bit slow from the get-go. 43 minutes, seven for 13 from the field was the most efficient piece on the Cleveland side. But Evan Mobley, not going to get it done four for 13 from the field. But 11 boards, you have Jared Allen tangled up with Mitchell Robinson, who I find to be a very strong defensive center. I think you're going to see a lot of offensive opportunities in that Julius Randle matchup here for Evan Mobley. I think he plays a lot better this time around. Cleveland needs to make some adjustments, maybe get some high ball screens going, not just isolation for Donovan Mitchell. And I think that creates a path for Evan Mobley to go out and absolutely smash in this game. I think the projection's too low. Again, they're the ones bringing down the pace of this series. No doubt about that one. But in terms of pace for the Knicks, they're slow too. 26, 97.4 possessions per 48 minutes. But defensively, they're not as good as they played in that last game. 19th in adjusted defensive rating over the course of this season. Again, I thought the Knicks were going to up the pace. I think they're going to try to do it again here. I know it's a Tom Thibodeau team, but Emmanuel quickly with no Josh Hart out there, that's a defensive downgrade for sure. So Evan Mobley, Lots of room to roam. No Josh Hart, one of the best rebounding small forwards in basketball, considering he's doubtful. Evan Mobley, 26 and a half PRA, probably my second favorite play on the entire board for tomorrow. My favorite coming up next. But first, let's have a word from Bet365. Look at me being a professional and stuff, saying professional things. All right, four states. Just check this out if you live in one of these four states. Everybody else can just tune out. We're going to have other offers for you coming up soon. I promise. I promise we'll have other offers like, I don't know, there's amazing things going on at Prize Picks, amazing things going on with FanDuel. A lot of great opportunities for you to sign up. You can find all of those. If there's something great going on in the sportsbook world, you can sign up for that in the video description box below. But this is the best one, and it's only available in four states. Let me list them off to you just in case you live in one of them. It's going to be fantastic. Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia. I repeat, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado. See, I backed it up. It was amazing. And you know what? Bet365 backs it up with this deal. Deposit $10 or more. Bet $1 and get $200 in bonus wet bets. Bonus sweats? Oh, <laughs> see? Bonus sweats with bonus bets. Freudian slip there, of course. But you sign up for that in the video description box below. Click on that link. Take advantage because I don't know how long this thing is going to be around. But $200 in bonus bets is a lot of ammunition to fire up in the NBA playoffs, in the MLB streets, wherever you want. Again, the worst thing that could possibly happen is you lose that $10 deposit. That's the worst thing that could happen. The best thing is that that $200 in bonus bets lasts you for the rest of your life at Bet365. You could run that thing to the moon. Nox in a moon. That's a mummy quote for you. Just saying, get yourself $200 in bonus bets over at Bet365 if you're in Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, or Virginia. It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Look, I was being so professional, and then I ruined it with a mummy quote. So let's redeem ourselves. One more game on the board. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Sorry if you were listening on podcast form. That was really annoying. The Clippers upset special in game one. How good is Kawhi Leonard? Apparently Russell Westbrook's a good defender now. That's wild stuff that we're observing. I mean, he still can't hit a shot to save his life. But, you know, that's cool. Phoenix! My God. The title favorites. What a dud right from the get-go here in the Western Conference. Maybe it's a buy-low spot here for Phoenix. Maybe it is. We'll say Kevin Durant. First thing that I noticed when you pull up the box score, 40, 
five minutes. You think this dude is good to go? <laughs> you think they were taking their time with him? Just throwing it out there. 45 minutes was not in the realm for me. Otherwise, I would never in a million years took it an under on anything for Kevin Durant. I can tell you that much. I can also tell you, they do not want to go down 2-0 on the road, although it's not the apocalypse. Chris Paul coming back into LA. Clippers, you know, I'm sure there'll be enough Phoenix fans that it'll be pretty serviceable, pretty familiar uh, surroundings there for Chris Paul. Chris Paul did not look good. That would be the second thing that I would throw out there. I would argue that because of Russell Westbrook's three for 19 shooting, it's going to underscore how bad Chris Paul was offensively. Two for eight from the field. Not really all that involved outside of a couple of really good swing passes. Kind of, I, I don't want to put it this way, but it was just kind of like garbage assists. It was like stat collecting assists. It wasn't like he was going crazy creating for everybody. There were a couple of good alley-oops there to DeAndre Ayton, but I will say Chris Paul was by far the least impressive version of himself, which shouldn't be all that surprising as he gets up there in age. They need that hamstring stay attached. That would be good too. We've seen a number of times coming playoff series where Chris Paul just needs to stay healthy. But there's no doubt about this. This is the game that we're all excited to watch. Devin Booker made some really good defensive plays. Russell Westbrook on the other side, unbelievable defensive plays. But there's a lot of things to mine out of the box score. And there's a lot of things that I think have changed drastically. But I think we're still going to see a pretty similar iteration of what the Clippers want to do. And Russell Westbrook, he's gotten a tough rap here from me, from a lot of advanced analytics individuals. But Russell Westbrook is not an above average NBA player at this point in time. But... Come playoff time, if you're going to have that kind of intensity and that kind of effort on the offensive boards from him, awesome. You keep him on the floor. It's weird to me that you have Norman Powell sitting there and that you're only going to play him as much of an offensive catalyst as he can be for only 23 minutes. It's a little weird to me when you have Terrence Mann, who I find to be a better overall basketball player, only going to play him 24 minutes in that spot, although a really solid 24 minutes offensively and defensively. So... Russell Westbrook, are we going to see this be a series where regardless of his shooting, again, three for 19, it could not have been worse, but he had 36 minutes on the floor. Are we going to see 36, 38 minutes of Russell Westbrook no matter what, because he's giving this kind of defensive intensity? Think it's on, it's on the table. It's a lot more minutes than I was expecting. That was kind of like a Seinfeld. I don't really know. Well, Jerry, what's the deal with? Yeah, Russell Westbrook though, his triple double, triple double odds at FanDuel closed at plus 1,300 last game. It's at plus 950, but you give me 36, 38 minutes of Russell Westbrook, I think you just blindly put a little bit on it. And this is just a lean play because I want to talk through it. I have two plays that I like exponentially more based on what we saw in the rotations and the minutes. But Russell Westbrook, I think you just have to throw it out there. He ended up putting up 9, 8, and 11. Yeah, well, 11 boards. I should go 9, 11, and 8. That's the standard way of saying that across the board, but he's involved offensively. You're going to see him. You can't shoot worse. They're basically going to live and die by the Westbrook here is what it seems to me like Ty Lue and these, this Clippers organization is okay with. So small play on a guy who at FanDuel is right now plus 950. I'd be shocked if that number didn't close closer to plus 700, plus 750 tomorrow because I bet it generates some steam coming into tomorrow. So just wanted to throw that one out there. 36 plus of Russell Westbrook. He's going to be involved with a basketball in his hands. All right, to the like section. And shout out first to Kawhi Leonard. Wanted to give him the special shout out because I didn't end up on anything uh, from his points perspective. I think it's more efficient. A 40 and a half PRA to a pretty wildly large number. But 38, five and five. He was the best player on the floor, no doubt about it. 42 minutes. This could be like a legacy series for him. But the big issue with that is that Kevin Durant is still very good at basketball. And Kevin Durant just played... <clears throat> said it before so it kind of ruins the luster 45 minutes in game one they weren't saving him up for anything they just unloaded the clip of kevin durant that is a lot of minutes for kevin durant you know what he averages 29 per game in just 35 and a half minutes if you put him in for 40 minutes i project him for just nearly 30 you put him in for 43 44 this is like this falls into lock territory so this is my third favorite play on the board it is the over of 27 and a half points i can't believe this number is this low when you just saw 45 minutes maybe it's because of the blowout risk it still exists in this game i'm not going to act like it doesn't but that spread close to 10 10 and a half it is seven and a half for this game you saw the clippers play 
I'd say average basketball. Russell Westbrook, three for 19. Kawhi Leonard was outrageous. And if you get that from your star, awesome. But there were there was only one other ancillary piece from the Clippers who I would say had an above average all around basketball game. And we'll talk about him next. But Kevin Durant, 27 and a half points. Kind of a broken number to me. This was borderline lock territory. I think it's your best uh, like play that you're going to have there on the board. Definitely going to be a big part of my cards, both at books and at prize picks. Now, to the like, uh, from the like play to the lock play of the game of Ika Zubat's friends. He played 30 minutes. He had the lion's share of it. And there was a weird rotation in that fourth quarter. We saw Mason Plumley get up to 18 minutes, but they're going to have a true center. It looks like on the floor at all times here, and they are not going to go small. I thought there were some chances that they would force DeAndre Ayton into some pick and roll, that they might switch up some lick, well, some looks, that they might go to more Marcus Morris, even though he didn't even see the floor. He was healthy and expected to be a part of the Clippers postseason rotation, but you know how many minutes he played? Squadoosh! Did not see it. Coaches are damn dirty liars. You have to remember that, friends. But what doesn't lie is rotations and who they actually put out on the floor. You can't lie about the thing that actually is. You can't lie about the thing that actually is. And Avika Zubats is a little bit of a problem here for DeAndre Ayton. I'm just going to throw it out there. He has the defensive intensity. And I liked the Mason Plumley addition purely because I think it pushed Zubats to be starting to be that dude. He never really had anybody pushing him at the center position there. And now with a very serviceable Mason Plumley there as a backup, the guy had 7, 11, and 2 in just 18 minutes. You're seeing Zubats play some fantastic basketball against competition that's a lot better than him. They beat Phoenix in that last game, whether they should or not, you know, from the last time. I don't know. They're up one nothing, so joke's on us, I suppose. You've got uh, 30 minutes of Avika Zubats. 30 minutes, and he put up 12 and 15. And I don't see how you don't project him for 26 to 28 minutes minimum here. He has 10.8 and 10 rebounds per game. He averaged 28 minutes per game. So I'm projecting him basically at his baseline. And yet, we're getting major plus money to back a Vika Zubats double-double. I don't quite understand it. Now, this isn't your typical double-double guy because we are getting plus 175 before. Now it's down to plus 135 is the prevailing number here at the moment. But I think he is just primed in this matchup against DeAndre Ayton. He looks motivated. He's now had double-digit points in every game since March 23rd. I really like his form. I like what he offered on the defensive end. I don't think you take that off the floor if this game stays competitive. I think he was a big part of why the Clippers were as successful. 15 boards in that spot. Just an absolute animal. They're going to try to force him into pick and roll, but I don't see how you really do that and force him away from the basket when DeAndre Ayton is your true center. If they want to go small, try something with Kevin Durant, you're going to get murdered and pummeled on the inside at times, and you don't want him facing there. So... Lots of objective NBA analysis with this one, but the key, plus money for something that the guy is averaging on the season. Pretty tough for me to get away from it when there's minutes upside for 30-32 if he gets out there and plays. And Mason Plumley, maybe he doesn't play as well as he did in that fourth quarter rotation, and you see 14 minutes from him and 34 for Zubats. Not completely off the table. If this weren't plus money, it wouldn't be a jam, but this is my favorite play you have here on the board, and Thinking about adding the Russell Westbrook triple double to the mix too. Just a game that I think is target rich in the props department, in the game environment department. Do not want to deal with the minus seven and a half. Think that's perfectly efficient. Don't want to deal with the total, but a lot of props, a lot of ways that I think you can take advantage of it on Tuesday. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Head to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays for Tuesday's amazing playoff slate we have before us. I just love the NBA. I'm going to miss it so much. So take advantage of it now. Take advantage of Bet365. If you're in the great states of Colorado, New Jersey, Ohio, and Virginia, great stuff there. Deposit $10 or more. Bet one. Get $200 in bet credits. Only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all. I'll be back with MLB Lindy's and NBA Lindy's on Wednesday. We are burning the midnight oil every single night here on the Odd Shopper channel. So come check it out. Until next time, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Tuesday.